so we set our young people up to get into a compulsive relationship with pornography. Okay, so yeah. people can go either into the compulsive version or the repressive version. Okay, mm -hmm. females are more likely to go into repression of this, and men are more likely to go into the compulsive form. So one of the metaphors I use a lot is to talk about food, that if you are being told that your desire for chocolate or sweets makes you bad, it's dangerous, you shouldn't do it, you're going to get either anorexia or compulsive eating, you know, yes. now bulimia or compulsive overeating. So you drive the, the immoderation. Okay, well then if you're like, oh, I really like this, it feels validating to find these sexual images, it makes me feel alive, it makes me feel like nobody's controlling me for once, okay, plus I'm getting the message that when I finally get married, she's just going to be all about being there mm -hmm. for me sexually and she's going to love every minute of accommodating my narcissistic self. <laughs> <laughs> And no, nobody's ever thought that. No. <laughs> For some weird reason, she's not into that, but I will be patient with her when she gets her defectiveness together. Um, <laughs> We're laughing yeah, because it that's totally us. us. Entirely. Yeah. Entirely. Exactly. Just because exactly. I knew my penis way more than Ashla knew her, her parts it entitled yeah. me to, you know, all the right. sex that I wanted and everything. It's yeah, well, and there's this implicit entitlement that often people grow up with, which is that the good wife will accommodate you. The good wife will be there for you so you don't look at porn. I mean, men yeah. get these messages all the time. And this is not a message of how do you create a sexually collaborative relationship, a relationship of, that makes two people happy. That's about accommodating each other's differences, about knowing each other, about, you know, how do you create something that gives you both peace and how do you handle the differences that you're going to have and what you desire and how often you desire and so on. Because as soon as somebody means, makes it about you should manage my feelings and my needs, you've turned it into work for the other person and now they really don't want it. And then that drives the hunger in the higher desire person and the yeah. resistance in the low desire person. Then that higher desire person often is like gets resentful enough because you're supposed to be accommodating me, you loser. And then they go look at more porn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which or only seek other women, which is yeah. seek, our case. Like. Yes, exactly. Or find some other woman who finally understands how great you are. And and then, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's so funny and not funny. I don't mean to laugh, yeah. really. It's just, it's such painful stuff for people. But then, of course, that just drives the, why would I want to open up to you? You know, you're yeah, so yeah. self-serving. You are so self-justified. You've never really wanted to make love to me because you don't want to know me because I don't, I don't validate you enough. Um, and oftentimes on the lower desire person side, there's a similar anxiety. Like I wanted you to just make sex. Okay. I wanted you to handle my fears around this and to bring me into my sexuality. Cause that's what I was taught was going to happen. And you've done a crappy job of it. So, <laughs> so I'm not, I don't have to deal with my responsibility in this. 